talking about the things that matter most to you. Catholic Women Now. Well, welcome to Catholic Women Now here on Iowa Catholic Radio. I'm Julie Nelson, joined by my faithful co-host, sit-in for Chris, Emily Schmidt. Hi, Emily. Hi, Julie. Good to see you this morning. It's good to see you, too. We're... We are closing up, on, closing in on the end of the liturgical year yeah, here, aren't we? We are, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll let's talk a little bit about that later, but let's start with prayer. Absolutely. As always, we entrust our time together um, into the hands of our loving Mother Mary. As we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, our guest who we'll be bringing in a little bit later is Kristen Van Uden. She's a publicist with Sophia Institute, which is a Catholic publishing company. And Kristen has put together a series of Advent book ideas for adults and children that she's going to share with us. And it's a really nice list. I'm excited to talk to her about it. And she has a Catholic planner to wow. talk about as well. Mm-hmm. And it's very beautiful. And so she's going to give us a little, um, some ideas since Advent's right around the corner, Emily. And it this, is. like we talked about earlier, this is Christ the King Sunday. I know it's the end of the Catholic liturgical year and the beginning of the next one. So I don't know we, how many people realize that, that mm-hmm. this is the end of the liturgical year with Christ the King. Yeah. I don't, I don't think a lot of people recognize that either, that we start a new liturgical year, the first Sunday of Advent. So, and if for people who don't know, we have three liturgical years, year A, B, and C. So we're finishing year C and we're going to move into year A. And how can we know year A? Well, you're going to hear a lot from the gospel of Matthew this year. That's how we know it's year A. Okay. That's good to know. Mm -hmm. So how do you prepare liturgically with your music for Christ the King Sunday? Um, You know, Christ the King is like, is a Sunday similar to, um, you know, Corpus Christi, Pentecost, Easter, Christmas. You just have your standard favorites that you kind of have to have to sing um, very obviously kingly songs that that we we use. Of course, now my mind blanks, Julie, when you put me on the spot. (laughs) I could like in any other moment, I could like tell you exactly what we're singing, but now I'm like, wait a minute. What, what do I sing? Well, I'm going to give you a pass because you're probably planning Lent right now. So you're past this. We're already. getting there. Yeah. We're, we're almost, I just finished through the Christmas season. So yeah, in the next few weeks, it'll be ordinary time in winter. And then Lent, I know that's where my mind is. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Plus on your studies, you said you're finishing up this weekend is your last yeah. weekend of school. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Finishing up a semester of intro to liturgy. So there's a lot going on right now in the liturgical life. What about in the family life, Julia? Are you getting your Christmas shopping done? Oh, you know what? I, this is the first year um, I'm putting together. Yes, I am. (laughs) And two, I'm putting together an advent box to send out to my grandsons. And I'm so excited. That's exciting. Some of the books that uh, Kristen will be talking about, I've got my eye on to put in that, put in that box. So yeah, I am. I I found this really, I saw it at Divine Treasures a few years ago and I was in there and they can get them for you, but it's a nativity scene, children's nativity scene. It's wooden and there's a star and you take the star and you follow the star. It's instead of elf on the shelf, it's like, where is the star today in the house? Oh, and cool. you move it around. And my, my grandson loves stars. He's just so enamored by him. And I thought, oh, this is perfect. I'm going to send this, this out to them as well. And it'll be hopefully a family tradition for them. That's really cool. I love those little traditions that you can make with as a family. I do too. I do too. And I know you have a niece, so you're probably thinking ahead when she gets a little older, what fun things Auntie Am can give her. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I I am thinking, I know this is their last Thanksgiving. They were in the hospital with her. So we're excited that this Thanksgiving we'll all be together. You have a lot to be thankful for. Very much, very much. Yeah. Well, let's bring in our guest today, um, Kristen Van Uden. She's a publicist with Sophia Institute Catholic Publishing Company. Kristen, welcome to Catholic Women Now. Good morning, ladies. Thanks so much for having me. Just tell us a little bit about Sophia Institute. I don't know if a lot of people are aware what all the great things are coming out of your, your work there. 
Sure. So Sophia Institute Press has been around since the 1980s. So in the past 30 or so years, we've published about 300 separate titles and sold over a million of those worldwide. Um, we publish about six to eight new books per month, so I can hardly keep up with them all. Uh, I have the illustrious role of being our spokesperson for all of our dead and or Italian authors, sometimes both at the same time. So I get to read a lot of the beautiful reprints that we published from the church's treasury. So all the way back to St. Robert Bellarmine, to priests who have died within the past 20 or so years, like Father Michelli. So all of these very solid books that are perennial, tried and true, and we think are really beneficial for the modern reader as well. And we also do have about half and half. So half our reprints and then half of our books each month are by new authors. So up and coming in the Catholic world, ways to or, you know, rethink traditions. So several of the books we'll talk about today, like the Jesse tree about the Advent traditions and uh, the planners, the liturgical calendars are sort of ways to bring these, these very ancient traditions into a modern family and make it something fun and something you can do together. Um, and not just another thing to add to the to the checklist. So we are very lucky. We're a continually growing company. So we have expanded out into other products, including puzzles and games. We just issued a game called Know Thyself, which is kind of like a Catholic version of Apples to Apples, if you're familiar with that card mm-hmm. game. So mm-hmm. it's based on the temperaments. So it's a lot of fun because you find out what other people think about you and your temperament. <laughs> so it's always mm-hmm. very illuminating. And that's um, a book you guys publish, right? The Temperament God Gave You? Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. And that one, uh, I believe that's one by Lorraine Bennett, who we, we were going to feature another of her books today about Catholic minimalism. So Wonderful. really something for everybody, children's books included, more cerebral books for, for intellectuals and everything in between. Exciting. That sounds wonderful. You, it just seems all of a sudden Sophia Press was on the, it, it bursted into life here and publishing all these things. And we actually use a lot of your, um, you send us emails about the new authors and, and we've had several on the show here too. So it's been a wonderful resource, not only for me personally, but for the show as well to showcase the work you're being, that are being the works that are being published through Sophia yeah. Institute. Good to hear. I'm often a guest on John Leonetti's show, actually. Yeah. For some oh, of cool. Friends. So <laughs> maybe readers are a little bit familiar with some of our <clears throat> from last year. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Yeah, John's wonderful. He's yeah. fun to talk to, isn't he? Yeah, he's really easy to talk to. It goes by so quickly. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. is. He is. He is. <laughs> well, this is Catholic Woman Now, um, Iowa Catholic Radio, and we've been visiting with Kristen Van Uden. She's a publicist with Sophia Institute. It's a Catholic publishing company. We're going to take a little break, and we come back. She has highlighted several Advent books for adults and children and families. So stay tuned and hear more. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio funded by Loris College, an innovator and leader in Catholic liberal arts education located in Dubuque. Dedicated to integrating the Catholic intellectual tradition throughout the curriculum, Loris College transforms students as active learners, reflective thinkers, ethical decision makers, and responsible contributors within our communities. Named the fifth best baccalaureate college in the nation by Washington Monthly, Loris College invests in graduate and undergraduate students to achieve a bright future. Learn more at loris.edu. That's loris.edu. Hi, this is Father PJ McManus from Be Not Afraid, inviting you to join me along with Executive Director Matt Wilk for Iowa Catholic Radio's Footprints of God pilgrimage to the Holy Land, scheduled for November 12th, 21st, 2020. We'll have Mass at St. Peter's House, take a boat ride on the Sea of Galilee, and enjoy a special dinner with the atmosphere of Bedouin Land. Not all pilgrimages are created equal. Don't miss Iowa Catholic Radio's 2023 Holy Land pilgrimage led by expert guides Steve and Janet Bay. Details at iowacatholicradio.com. Welcome back to Catholic Women Now here on Iowa Catholic Radio. I'm Julie Nelson, joined by Emily Schmidt, and we are visiting with Kristen Van Uden. She is a publicist with Sophia Institute. It's a Catholic publishing company that publishes many books and now branching out into children's puzzles and games for the family. Kristen, um, you gave us a nice, sent us an over a nice list of books, so let's just dive in. So the first one you have on your list is The Jesse Tree. Yes. So this tradition is something that I had never heard of before, actually. I managed to make it through however many years as a Catholic and going to Catholic school and had not 
known about this tradition. Um, are you ladies familiar with this tradition to begin with? Barely. I'm okay. like you. I, yes. I don't know a lot about it. <laughs> so it was very, do you know very, more about it? I was a latecomer to it, but it's a okay. wonderful tra- and it's a wonderful tradition. Mm-hmm. So yes, yeah, so it was very. I learned a lot from just a cursory glance through this book. So basically, for those who don't know, the tradition follows Jesus's family tree, so his genealogy, and traces the prophecies in Scripture. Um, obviously, David root of Jesse's stem. So the words that we hear in Okamo Emmanuel, for example, will ring a bell when you're going through this tradition. And the idea is to build upon that to bring you to the moment of the nativity and to understand really the deep Old Testament roots and prophecies concerning um, Jesus as the Savior. And this tradition is made more interactive by these ornaments that are typically decorating what is called the Jesse tree. And this book includes, if you want to order them with the ornaments, we do have those available. So you can order it and make your own. Um, And I like that the book includes kind of design ideas and pages that you can cut out if you just wanted to do them out of paper. Or we also have available wooden ornaments if you want to have the kind of official uh, (laughs) companion ornaments. Those are nice. I tried to make ornaments with the kids and it was just an utter disaster. (laughs) It's always Um, a struggle. (laughs) So so, um, to kind of recap this on the Jesse tree, so a family would use it every night, spend about 15 minutes as a family reading and talking about about that exactly. particular passage. That's right. The meditations are just a couple of pages. So for those, even with short attention spans, it seems like a doable daily thing to add after your nightly rosary or something like that. Okay. And uh, it's, it can be done in addition to an Advent calendar as well to just more deeply root that understanding of Advent. Okay, so let's move on to The Secret of the Bethlehem Shepherds. And this is by Father Dwight Longnecker, who wrote a more of a, an adult book about the uh, about the wise men. And I understand he spent some time on sab- sabbatical in the Holy Land researching more of this. And then he got this idea to write this book, which is what age group would you say this is geared for? I would say this you can probably be probably ages 10 and up, although it is written more for an adult audience, but the content is perfectly fine for, for younger audiences. It's a shorter book, so it's under 200 pages and it's small. So it's probably something you could read over the course of Advent. And as you said, he spent a lot of time on the ground in Bethlehem, which I thought was a very interesting approach to studying this, this topic that we really think we know we know all about already and he went so far as to interview current shepherds in Bethlehem wow. <laughs> so a lot has changed but it's definitely an interesting perspective and I have not yet had the chance to go to the Holy Land I know one of my co-workers is on pilgrimage there right now but I'm sure it would really foster that desire and and be kind of a window into the Holy Land for those of us who can't make it out there so the next book is The Way of Living with Less, which um, you mentioned a little bit earlier. It's by, um, oh gosh, um, tell me again the author's name, a jump blank in here. Her name is Lorraine Bennett. Yeah. And as Emily mentioned before, she has previously written on the temperaments for Sophia Institute. So she has a whole uh, list of books that help you to understand not only your temperament, but your spouse's temperament, those around you, how to apply this in the workplace. So really a fascinating insight into psychology. And in this book, she tackles basically this trend of minimalism. So yeah. simplifying your life, decluttering. I know a lot of us, especially around the holidays, that is the time when you get stressed out. You have a lot of stuff. You have a lot of gifts ready to go and decorations, and it's easy to get overwhelmed by things. And so this book was a huge wake up call uh, to me. And, and it's rooted in and Catholic teaching too, but obviously we're meant to have detachment from this world and from stuff and from material things and to focus more on the spiritual. So she she approaches this not only as a way to help you be more productive, but also as a spiritual exercise as well. And, she, really and, and did you say she, she bases it on St. Therese's little way? Little, she does. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And, 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 and right. I thought it interesting too. It's not just clutter we need to detach from too. Yeah. Sometimes it's our certain things we cling to emotionally or relationships or something like that. We well, are going to your computer. <laughs> yeah. Right. We're going to, um, uh, we have her down to contact her to have her come on the show in January because usually oh, January is a big time we all purge, right? And- That's right. Yeah, New Year's <laughs> resolutions. I think what, the, I, Target what I love about this, on sale. <laughs> what I love no. about this book is like it shows how the church and the spirituality of the Catholic Church 
has already been thinking about a lot of these ideas, even though they've just become popular within the last, you know, two to five years. So I love this. Great. This is great. Beautiful. It's yet again, oh, yes, we thought of everything before popular yes. culture picked up <laughs> exactly. on it. <laughs> we, we knew what brought us joy before that was even <laughs> tagged, right? Oh, exactly. yes. <laughs> okay, I think we have time for one more before we take a break. Um, the Wise Men Who Found Christmas. Raymond Rororo is back writing books here, another children's book by him. Yes, this is probably our most widely anticipated title of the year. Um, last year, he, or I think two years ago, he wrote The Spider Who Saved Christmas. So now he turns his attention to the Magi. So if he managed to make a spider something Christmassy, <laughs> then the Magi are something that's, you know, very easily adaptable. And it's... um it's been already making waves. He's been on Fox and Friends about this, and there's there's a big campaign, but he is really a beloved children's author. They're always one of our most popular titles. This one, I, I love the artwork because the um, it's all kind of this purple theme where the, the wise men are following the star, and it's like it gradually becomes lighter and lighter as they approach the nativity scene and as oh. they get closer to Jesus. So it really communicates these truths in a... Uh, pictorial way, which of course we know, like the principle behind icons themselves. And I think children's books can often um, just communicate these things that you can't really get across in words sometimes. So what age group would you recommend this for? This really is children who are old enough to pay attention to a story. So ages like four and up, probably um, a good bedtime story. And then, of course, when for young readers, when they're starting to be able to read, it's a, it's a good short one to keep their attention and get them started on. OK, well, I just want to add this little thing that um, to the, your, I was out on your website and I want to tell listeners to go to your website because you have done on, on many of these books, you have a function where you can see every page in the book and you can, yeah. can preview it. And I thought that was very, very nice to see. So, cause you can't pick it up. Right. But you can at least look exactly. at it and see and get a feel for the book. And I think that's a really nice feature. For sure. Well, this, we've been visiting with Kristen Van Uden here on Catholic Women Now on Iowa Catholic Radio about Advent books and things for the family. We have more to come. We have a couple more things we want to mention. She has on her list here that we want to visit with you all about. So stay tuned. St. Vincent de Paul helps so many people. You're right, Zoe. St. Vincent de Paul Executive Director Steve Havman here. We are serving over 32,000 local residents with food, clothing, furniture, and financial assistance annually. We invite you to learn more more about all of our life-changing programs that positively impact so many Iowans by simply Googling St. Vincent de Paul of Des Moines. Our mission is to help those in need become self-sufficient through education, community connectedness, and unconditional support. Help us help others. Even kids! Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Catholic Women Now provided in part by Permar Security, providing security solutions for homes and businesses since 1953. Permar Security is a Catholic-owned family business supplying security systems, access control systems, video surveillance, fire alarm systems, and video doorbells. All alarm systems are monitored out of their monitoring center located in the state of Iowa. Permar Security, 515-244-5660, permarsecurity.com. Welcome back to Catholic Women Now here on Iowa Catholic Radio. I'm Julie Nelson, joined by Emily Schmidt. Our guest today is Kristen Van Uden. She's a publicist with Sophia Institute. It's a Catholic publishing company. And we've been going over some Advent titles, books for children, adult, and families. And we wrapped up with uh, the wise men who found Christmas right before the break. Now we're going to go to the Holy Mass which I'm very excited about. And we kind of talked a little bit on the break about it. So Kristen, tell us a little bit about the Holy Mass book. Well, this title is my personal favorite from the selection today and probably maybe even all year. It is adorable. And it's by Kevin and Mary O'Neill. And they, along with, I believe their seven children, have physically constructed Lego sets to take us through the mass its entirety from beginning to I end love that also. <laughs> <laughs> these are um, scenes from the mass right yeah. you know the priest yep. is at the altar he's a lego <laughs> yep Man. they have the priest distributing communion they they have every single little part of the mass just in in detail i don't know how they do it that must have taken hours but <laughs> they physically construct all the legos and then 
take photos of it. So it's all no CGI, nothing. It's all something that they have created in their own house. Um, I also love how this book takes us through the biblical roots of the mass. And I actually learned things from this book, which I was so surprised at. So for example, the, um, the Exodus from the book of Exodus, the 10 plagues of Egypt, how each of those co- correspond to a false god that the Egyptians worshipped. So it was God showing his power over mm. these false gods. So Ra, the sun god, for example, who we see in Legos, um, is defeated by God showing the days of darkness, for example. Um, and it's just such a beautiful interactive way that really catches your attention and see something like that will stick even in my memory longer than just reading it in a book. So for for kids who maybe even kids who are readers, but especially those who maybe don't love reading so much. It's such a a great way to get this information across. Um, So as, so as a mom who raised three boys and um, stepped on and earned many passes in purgatory by stepping on (laughs) barefoot, (laughs) I might add, (laughs) I see this as having another level of interaction of like just looking at the photos how can I reconstruct this even like my son reading it to his son and looking at the look bringing back those childhood memories and just like really engaging on different levels with with kids right because they'll you'll you'll take a look at the book and notice a new thing every time and and try to identify where which figures from which sets they used. So uh, readers will notice a lot of repurposed Star Wars figures, for example. <laughs> one of them, I think it's Darth Maul, or one of them becomes the devil, um, <laughs> which naps, that makes sense. <laughs> the liter- That's great. That's That's Star a- Wars, yeah. <laughs> That's the wonderful. liturgist in me is geeking out. It's like, oh, the sacramental life, finding God in every little bit of creation, even yes. repurposed Star Wars Legos. <laughs> right, exactly. God and- uses everything, right? Yes, he yeah. Okay, well, we got we to gotta get to this last one. It's the Fiat Fiat traditional Catholic planner. Now, I've seen a lot of Catholic planners over my over the years who use different ones, but this one has a different feel to it. It just it, the artwork for one thing is beautiful. So tell us a little bit about this planner. So this planner is based on our liturgical calendars, which are a subscription that are illustrated by Jeremiah and Michaela of uh, Liturgy of the Home, Jeremiah and Michaela Harrison. And these are beautiful full-size posters that um, start with Advent. So now is a good time to get on board for those. But really, when you think about it, the liturgical year, of course, is not just Advent. It's the rest of the year. And so they have um, pioneered these, these beautiful calendars to really anchor the understanding of the liturgical year in the home. And they have now adapted that into a beautiful planner for 2023. So uh, it features their artwork on every page of the feasts of the day. Um, It makes sure to touch upon fasting days and ember days. So little known fact is that there are ember days, which are days of fasting within Advent, because we tend to forget sometimes that Advent is a period of of waiting and of penance before the joy, joyous feast of Christmas. So it's like a little Lent in that way, almost. Um, And a planner is something that I would get now because I always forget to get it. I'm scrambling like in January to find one. <laughs> and it's it's like right when everybody's sold out, but it's not yet on sale. So it's like that sweet spot where it's difficult to find the right one. But this one I think will be perfect because it is so hard to find a Catholic planner that really like takes into account holy days of obligation, for example. It's such a relief to not have to write that in yourself, right? Um, and Uh, It has periods or sections for what I'm grateful for this week, what virtue to work on, things like that. So it's really this practical way to enhance your spirituality in addition to to managing your hectic schedule. I like the the inclusion of the fasting days because I don't always remember those fasting days. And it's just nice to to wake up in the morning and to go through a planner. I'm also thinking I need to go to a paper planner because technology fails, right? Yeah, I lost yeah. my phone on my iPhone. I my calendar on my iPhone. I would be probably in deep <laughs> trouble <laughs> with many people. Yeah, the technology just doesn't work. I'm still a paper to do list type of person, yeah. so I live by my planner. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, yeah. Well, I that would make a great gift too for friends. You know wife, mother, cousins, whatever. It'd make a great gift. Yeah. I just gave one to my mom for her birthday. So it was specially requested. So I think uh, people are very excited about this one. 
Well, Kristen, this was wonderful having you join us on Catholic Women Now, talking about these Advent book ideas for the upcoming season. It's just right around the corner, as we talked about earlier. Just keep up that good work at Sophia Institute. Can you give out your um, website real quick so our listeners can have that? Yes. So all of these items are available at sophiainstitute.com. You can either search or some of them, a lot of them will be on the homepage as new releases. And also, I just want to give a plug for our local Catholic bookstore, Divine Treasures, will carry some a lot of these too. Yeah, they do carry a lot of that. It's really beautiful. Yeah. Well, thank you again and have a blessed Advent. My pleasure. Thank you. Well, let's close with a prayer. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Lord Jesus, our King, as we approach you this weekend at the altar, let let we ask that you reign over our hearts and be the King of our hearts. And uh, Lord Jesus, just fill us with your love and help us to prepare our hearts for the upcoming Advent, to prepare room for you in our hearts, to receive you more fully and deeper. We ask to sign all this in your holy name. Amen. In the, name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And don't forget, we have our dis- dinner in December, December 10th, at, down at the Embassy Suites, um, Catholic Answers host. An author, Cy Kellett, will be our guest. More information is on the website at iowacatholicradio.com. This is Catholic Women Now broadcasting from the Iowa Catholic Radio Network studio. Faith on Trial with Deacon Mike Mano and Gina Knoll is up next. Now go and do impossible things with God. Today's Catholic Women on The Voice for Catholic Women Now, Iowa Catholic Radio. Do impossible things you do.